Hey everyone, it's Miles again. Last week's video was devlog number zero, where I introduced myself and the game as it exists so far. You should give that a watch if you want to know what the game is all about. This week, I'd like to show off some user interface work I've been doing for the game's level editor. I'm actually pretty happy with the editor itself and the process of working on any individual level, but actually organizing the levels and the level progression has been a bit of a bottleneck when putting things together. Uh, we had some rudimentary tools before for creating and loading levels, but they left quite a lot to be desired, uh, especially considering that uh, I'm intending to release the level editor tools with the game on desktop platforms, so I'd really like it to be something that's not just convenient to use as a developer, but also is navigable for players who may want to try making their own levels. And since I'm going to be doing a lot of level design work over the next few weeks, uh, to get a new demo build ready for a local playtest event in January. I figured now would be a good time to revisit the level navigation UI and work it into something a bit more final. It's actually a system I'd like to reuse for future games if possible. So first I'll show what the old UI looked like and what the problems with it were, um, and then I'll show the new UI and explain how it solves some of those problems. And and finally, I'll take a look into the code and explain a bit about how I implemented the new user interface. The way levels are stored on disk is actually pretty simple. There's a maps folder in the game's directory uh, with levels stored as text files in a simple format uh, organized into various directories. For example, here's one of the tutorial levels, um, the general info top, uh, and then each line below stores the position and properties of a block. To load one of the levels in the game, you hit Ctrl L and type in the name of the level. If you don't type in the full path, it's assumed to be relative to the level that's currently open. To specify level progression, that is, uh, how the levels connect together, each goal block stores the name of the level that you want to load next if the player finishes the level at that goal. This works exactly the same as the load level menu. Um, for example, Let's change this one to point to TET6 instead of TET5. And sure enough, here we are. Levels also have spawn points, which define where the player starts when the level is loaded. You may want to load into the same level uh, at different positions depending on where you're coming from. So there can be more than one spawn point, um, and each spawn point has uh, its own unique name. This level only has one spawn point, so there's, there's no need to name it. Uh, it's unambiguous. If you want to load into a specific spawn point, you type the spawn point name after the level, uh, separated by a colon. For example, this level goes back to the overworld at spawn point tut return, and we can load into a specific spawn point from the load level menu in the same way. Uh, and here we are. Finally, to create a level, just type in the name of a level that doesn't already exist. Uh, so for example, there's only six tutorial levels. So uh, if we try to load into TUT20, we just get a new blank level. You can also duplicate the currently loaded level through the Save As menu. This copies the level and then loads the copy. Um, and you can see here, they're both in the folder now. So, the system works, but there are some annoyances. For one thing, typing in the full level path every time can get pretty tedious. Also, if you forget exactly what a level is called, you have to pop open the system file browser and go find it by hand, um, and then come back to the game and type it in again. Uh, it's easy to forget which level is which in a sequence, so you might have to load several levels before you can find the one that you're looking for. Um, and if you accidentally type the wrong thing, uh, either just by making a mistake about what the name of the level is, or just by you know, making a typo, um, it creates a level instead, which you then have to go hunt down in the system file browser to delete. And because the system uses a mix of relative and absolute level paths, uh, getting the path component of a level wrong is actually really common. Also, because the goals reference their target levels by name, if you rename a level, you have to go load every level that references it and update it by hand, uh, which is tedious and, and error prone. Also, the save as menu will just happily save over uh, an existing file if you tell it to, and so you can lose work that way and not even realize it until much later. 
Finally, from a programming standpoint, because the system uses multiple different kinds of absolute paths and relative paths, uh, with spawn point names you know optionally attached or not, um, and all that's based on user input, the constant you know sanitization and conversion between all of those different formats makes for some rather messy code. So I put some thought into what I'd like out of this UI, and I came up with a new system which I'm quite happy with, actually, and we'll probably even reuse this system in future games uh, if that's possible. The new system doesn't fundamentally change how levels are stored uh, or how they link together, but the UI makes interacting with that system pretty much completely different. First of all, uh, everything goes through this same centralized level select menu. And when you open it, you can see it highlights and scrolls to the currently loaded level. This makes loading levels in the same folder uh, pretty convenient. The main feature, of course, is this alphabetized list of every level currently in the game, which shows the folder structure as well. Uh, and you can you know, collapse and expand folders, uh, of course. And if I go to change something in Finder, um, you can see it, it instantly updates here, so it's fully synced. What's really neat is if you mouse over a level, you get a visual preview off to the side. Um, so there's no more guesswork about you know, which file is which. And then there's the search bar at the top that uh, filters the list in real time. So if I want to search for levels related to the anchoring mechanic, for example, you can see that it matches not just the names of levels, but also the names of uh, folders. Uh, if a level has multiple named spawn points, like in the overworld map, then instead of loading straight into the level, uh, we instead get a context menu listing all of the spawn points alphabetically, uh, and we can choose which one we want. To create a level in a given folder, we can right-click on the folder name uh, and open this menu. Um, if we try to overwrite a level that already exists, uh, you can see it won't let us. Um, the button gets you know, disabled and everything. Uh, Right-clicking on a level also gets us a context menu with some more options. Um, we can duplicate a level. We can also delete a level, uh, in which case the game auto-saves a backup of the level that you just deleted. So that way you, you know, don't lose any work by accidentally deleting the wrong file or something. You can see that's in here. Uh, you can rename a level as well, of course, um, and there's this checkbox here which uh, warrants some explanation. Uh, if you mark this, it will check all of the levels uh, in the game to see if any of them have references to the level that you're renaming. Uh, and if so, it updates those references and saves the level out. So you can see, even though we renamed uh, Tut2 to Tut Billion here, uh, the level progression is still intact. Setting goal targets goes through the exact same menu that I just showed. Um, so there's no more you know, typing in level paths manually uh, anywhere in the game, uh, just the level names. So that makes the code quite a bit cleaner as well. There are some things this UI specifically doesn't do, of course. Um, there's no real easy way to move levels around between folders. Like, for example, there's no you know, drag and drop system here. Right now, there's no menu for creating folders, although that would be easy to add. So. It's likely I'll implement that in the near future. Uh, there's no support for bulk operations either, so I can't, uh, for example, like select a, a bunch of these and delete all of them or, or move all of them around. You have to draw a line in the sand somewhere with stuff like this. Otherwise, you end up just re-implementing an entire like fully featured general purpose file browser in the game, which is obviously outside of the scope of a, a simple editor tool. But I expect these events to be rare enough that it shouldn't be too much of a hassle to just you know, open up the system file browser and, and fix things up in there. And to that end, there's uh, this context menu item here that will open the system browser to a specific file, which gets rid of most of the tedium of, of navigating to a specific level by hand each time. Now, there's a few things I'd like to note about how this is implemented in code. First things first, uh, about performance. To keep the level list in sync with the file system at all times, we actually scan the entire maps directory every single frame, and regenerate the UI each frame based on that. Uh, intuitively, this seems wasteful and slow, but it turns out it's actually totally fine. Uh, it consistently takes about 0.8 milliseconds, which is about a 20th of a frame, so no problem there. Also, to display the level previews, we have to load the level, bake all the meshes, render it to the screen, and then unload the level. And again, we do that every single frame. Uh, I also expected this to be a performance problem, but it was also fine. Even in a debug build, 
This runs at 60 frames a second for every level, except for a couple files that were made specifically as stress tests for performance benchmarking. And I happen to know there's a decent amount of headroom for optimization here if it does become too slow, so no problem here either. And finally, when we update references when renaming a level, we have to load not just one level, but every single level in the entire game, of which there are currently about 200. But because we're not drawing all the levels, we can skip loading meshes and doing other graphical initialization work. And it turns out that's actually by far the most expensive part of level loading. Actually, parsing the level files off disk is pretty fast. I still thought for sure it would freeze the game for a moment to do this, but all told, it actually only takes about 25 milliseconds, which is about a 40th of a second and there's plenty of headroom to optimize there as well. So the lesson to take away, I guess, is if the basic underlying operations are programmed well enough, you can implement high-level behavior in pretty stupidly simple ways on top of them, and it might just be good enough. Now, the second thing, simplicity. Escher isn't written in an existing game engine, so I'm able to have full control over how the game loop and various features are implemented. So rather than level loading and rendering being tied tightly into existing you know, complicated stateful systems and pipelines, as they tend to be in at least the engines that I've used. Each one is instead just a simple function, so I can load any level from anywhere in the code with just one function call. Same goes for rendering the level. This made implementing the fancier features of this interface surprisingly easy, since I can rely on existing code to do all the heavy lifting. Finally, the third thing about the library Deer and GUI. Dear MGUI is an immediate mode UI library that we use for all of the editor tools in this project, and it makes defining dynamic UI based on runtime data like this an absolute breeze. Um, I can't possibly recommend it enough. Uh, if you're not familiar with the idea of immediate mode GUI programming, uh, and you want to be, I'll put a link in the description to the original MGUI lecture by Casey Muratori, which first introduced the concept. It's beyond the scope of this video to summarize it here, but maybe I'll make an explainer at some point, because I think it's important. In any case, because of the immediate mode nature of the UI library, that is, because we regenerate the UI each frame based on data fetched from the file system, and because the interface is modal, meaning only one of any given type of dialog will be open at once, we're able to store only a bare minimum amount of information, all of which is either static data local to just one function, or information stored implicitly by dear MGUI. Specifically, we have to store which dialog is open, which file it refers to, and the contents of the text box in that dialog, and everything else is generated on the fly. So the entire functionality of this interface is contained in just one section of code, and particularly it's contained in just one function call as opposed to how things were before, where various bits of string manipulation and persistent state handling were spread all around the code base. All in all, I think this is a good example that really shows the power of the immediate mode GUI paradigm, and the Dear MGUI library in particular. That's it for today's devlog. Sorry this one was a bit late, I'm still kind of figuring out the workflow for producing these things. As I mentioned, I'll mainly be doing level design over the next couple weeks, so that will most likely be the topic of the next devlog. I'll be streaming some of that on Twitch as well, if you're interested. Hope to see you all next time.